All right, tell us about Freddy. Uh, Freddy suggested. He suggested, all right. Suggested what? Um, Say again. All right, we leave it at that, and then we just kind of go piece by piece, figure it out like we did in chapter eight, right? This is a little tricky um, because what's missing here? Uh, the, um, the, eh. the, the, you know what it is. What? It's the expletive, right? Yeah, there's no, the expletive is kind of not said here, right? If you saw the expletive that, it would have been easier to know that that stuff is all nominal, but they don't have that here. What is it that he suggested? That you take some taxes, you take a taxi. Okay, and that's a pattern. That's a pattern uh, seven. Yeah, we take a taxi. If you had, if you did have the expert of that, it would go up here. Oh, a taxi. Um, no, we don't because we have, here this is acting as a prepositional phrase, so it's a little different from the one we looked at earlier. Um, we're taking the taxi and uh, we're doing it instead of what? Instead of the subway. All right, let me just, let me make that neater so you can see. This is actually how we're taking it, right? Instead of instead of the subway, um, a taxi, the subway. Okay, um, what do we have left? Uh, a splendid idea. Do you know what these are? I don't know if you saw these before. Uh, no. It's, this is not, um, This is called a sentence a positive. It's, this is repeating the whole idea of the sentence. Um, and it, is, it also looks a little bit like an absolute phrase there too. We have a head word and a post now modifier. Okay, uh, now if you're still unclear on the absolute phrases, we have the solution right here in number 11. What do you see over there? Oh, what a beautiful sentence full of like cinematic images in there, right? Look at all those verbs too. Is this a verb? Yeah, it's not. No? Why not? Because it's, it's a um, participle. What do, you, what do you not have in front of this? There's no B in front of it, all right? It doesn't say the stores are decorated. Um, that would be the passive participle. Um, this wants to be a sentence in your, in your mind, doesn't it? The air alive with music. Why is this not a sentence? There's no B. It doesn't say the air was alive, right? Does this, this wants to be a sentence, doesn't it? See, your, your brain is telling you that these things are sentences. Look around for the B verb. If it's not there, it's not a sentence. So we'll save all that for later. Now, what are you left with, bruh? Uh, town was bested. All right, it's the um, name of the town, so we'll just put the whole thing up here. And that's a pattern. What pattern is it? Uh, two? Yes, it is. Adjectival subject complement. All right, uh, I should have put it over there, but we'll make space. Let's see. And what's our first absolute phrase? Okay, the stores, which ones? The ones that are decorated. Decorated how? With banners. What kind of banners? Bright colored ones. So we're done with that. What's the next absolute phrase? Okay. Oh, 
And do we have another one? Uh, the streets crowded with people. Okay. Crowded, that's your uh, passive participle, right? With people. Now, where do your dots go? No dots. And what is this? Head word. All right, I love it, okay? And they're beautiful, you know, especially if you're moving into your, you know, you need some concrete visual evidence for something. Here's a really efficient way to do it without cluttering up your sentence with a, a bunch of pattern threes. Looking great. Uh, let's see, oh, we have one more in the back. Okay, what are we gonna get out of our way here? First, in number 12. Uh, I shall not live in me. What else? Do you see anything else? Other prepositions? Overeating. Okay. Already, see, your brain told you that this was what? Overeating. Yeah, but you know it isn't. Why? Because there's a B. There's, yeah, and it also comes right after the preposition. So that. That leaves us with these two clauses, right? And that one has an if in front of it. What kind of word is this? A subordinate conjunction. So that means it's a dependent clause, a subordinate clause. So that leaves you with one choice for your main clause. What's that? Uh, I shall not live. Okay, and that's a pattern. And that's a pattern. Uh, oh, six. Yeah, okay. Um, some people diagram the not down here on these negative verbs. I don't do that because it's the opposite of the meaning. It seems like it's doing more. Now, how is the living happening? In vain. So that one was easy. Now, what are we left with? Uh, a subordinate clause. Usually, what's the subordinate clause going to do? It's going to be under the verb. Okay. And it would go here, usually, all right? But um, we can say, and it's again, almost always a judgment call, so don't, it, it's okay if you don't know if it goes as a sentence modifier or an adverbial. But this one looks like it's pushing this whole idea, so we would put it over here. What's our clause then? Uh, I can stop heart. I can stop. Heart. Yes. Good. What pattern is that? It's a pattern seven. Okay. Um, and how is the stopping happening? Uh, the stop yeah, that's right. So when, again, when your gerund is the object of a preposition, you have that little step thing. And you still need your subordinated conjunction, even though you're not going to say it's adverbial. So it would be diagrammed like this, um, and it's pushing this whole idea here. All right, so that's pretty much it on your chapter nine, is your, your meta discourse to tell you the truth, you know, luckily, those things. Um, your subordinate clauses, acting in sentence modifiers, but the big one is the absolute phrase. What is it? It's uh, head, head word and post noun modifier. modifier. And you can have a whole bunch of them. I think the number eight one in the exercises for the, what was that one for the absolute phrases? The boy moved, how did it go? You remember it, right? The boy, his, his shirt bunched between the shoulder oh blades, God, toes across the... <laughs> the boy moved like slowly across the room, his shirt bunched, his bony toes touching the floor, walked yeah. past his sisters with big thighs Who spreading said? them out, yeah. into the room where his mother and I were talking. Yeah, that one. <laughs> right. But that one turns out to be ridiculously easy because why? Six.
the boy was moving, right? That's it. And then the rest of it is prepositional, adverbial prepositions. And there are like five or six absolute phrases in that. But if you even try that one piece by piece, take a picture of it, send it to us, and Kenny and I will take a look at it. Um, all it is is head word, post noun modifier, head word, post noun. As soon as you can start recognizing those, um, all this becomes much easier. All right? So uh, see you in, well, this is, this is it. This is the end of it, end of the road. Congratulations, and good luck on your final exam, everybody.